What's up motor people? Before we start this video on how to merge a bunch of photos together in Photoshop to make a composite photo uh, using a large light modifier and Photoshop in Lightroom, I also have an older video that I'm going to put up here and it's going to show you how to light paint with a car and that was also shot out in the canyons in the middle of the night. So if you have an interest in that, please click on the link below and I'll add it at the bottom in case you want to watch it after this video. Thank you so much and enjoy the video. Bye. What's up motor people? My name is AJ and today I'm going to be doing a little bit of photography with you guys. Uh, this past weekend, I went out to the world famous container yard in downtown LA in the arts district and I took a photo of my friend's pickup truck. Now this is a classic GMC pickup truck, rat rod style, with a right hand drive conversion. So you'll see this uh, final photo here that I took. Uh, this is actually a composite photo taken of about six photos or so, and they're all pieced together. So in case you did want to do this yourself, uh, I will go ahead and do another photo that I took of his and put it together on video for everybody. So I'm going to go ahead and close this out now. And uh, first thing you're going to do is if you have Lightroom or Photoshop, those are the two I'm going to use. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and select the photos that we're going to be working with. Now, these I already pre-adjusted for the lighting. So I went ahead and uh, put them under develop and adjusted the exposure where I wanted them and normally when I'm dealing with Lightroom and these type of photos I'm only adjusting the light and as you get more practice with this you will see that um, you're gonna start building these photos in your head as you're taking them so if you you know screw up on the first ones don't worry about it it's gonna happen um, there are other photos I took at this event and um, they didn't come out exactly how I wanted them to so it happens it's part of just being uh, creative so uh, we'll go through some of the photos here here is the first one and this is a different angle of the truck and we got the first one here and the second one and if you see on the top left corner you can see the flash I'm using so I have a large uh, I believe it's called a monopod uh, with a I think it's about 40 inch uh, diffuser uh, definitely something you can use outside when it's really windy because it's pretty big uh, but it is still handheld enough that you could you know hold it with just one hand by yourself as you see in the photos here so um, so I'm gonna start walking around the truck you see the first one here left hand side I'm lighting up this portion of the truck I'm trying to get some of the angles here because uh, this truck does have a lot of curves on it so I do want to show it off uh, so I'm hitting the the uh, left side here first and then we'll go to the next photo and now you see and I'm lighting up the right hand side so in Photoshop later I have the left side lit up and now I have the right side lit up the next photo I did I'm actually shooting the interior so even though you see me on the right hand side there you could see the setup I have so I'm about 6'4 so you can see how big the actual lot mo light modifier is and the uh, system I have set up here I'll go ahead and uh, post on the screen here uh, exactly what I have just so you can get an idea uh, the camera I'm using I have a Sony a7 III uh, so you know it's nothing too fancy um, it's not like a six seven thousand dollar camera uh, so you can just do this as long as you have something that can just trigger a flash. That's pretty much all this is doing. Uh, the camera is on a tripod, so the photo does not move. Uh, this would be a really hard shot to do if you're trying to handhold this and walk around the truck because any little movement is going to completely throw it off. And you're going to spend a lot of time trying to align everything and it's just a headache. So simple tripod I bought it at Best Buy a long time ago it's pretty lightweight not in a good way like it'll probably blow over but it works so uh, so again I posted everything right here as you could see uh, 
the equipment I'm using. And now with this photo, I am lighting up the interior. Um, and again, just when you're building this together in your head, um, you're just kind of thinking of these things. I've done another previous photo uh, for my friend in his other truck, and he, uh, I don't think I really got the interior, and I've done it with other photos trying to do the same thing, and I just didn't get the interior on it. So um, again, practice. Now I remember to get a nice shot of the interior lit up. So uh, this shot is for the interior. Now the next shot here is the background. As you could see in the other photos, it was completely dark. Uh, yeah, you got to also work on placement, but you know, there's a ugly door back here. But um, you know, you can work on that later and try to, you know, copy that out, clone it out. But for now. We're just strictly working on the lighting part here. Uh, and then the, I think this is the last photo. Yeah, you can see me back in frame here. Again, holding up the light um, and hitting the back wall. So, and then I did do, I guess I did do another one in front. Um, again, the, I brightened up the flash a little bit and you can kind of see it's a little overblown here. It's just like a little overexposed though. So. I'm not a real fan of it, but there are some things that I can use here, like the headlights are kind of really well lit. Uh, maybe even the grill back here is a little lit up to help me out later. And I think that's the last one. Oh, and a little highlight there on the bottom. Taking the flash, you can kind of see it right here. So I can hit the lower half and kind of get some of these other angles too uh, down here. and try to catch some of the little items in the back like the radiator uh, again depending on the truck car that you're doing you know it might have um, some nice features down here uh, that you really want to highlight and okay so these are all the photos I took with it okay so again you'll go through these one by one kind of adjust uh, everything how you want it you know again back and forth um, these are how I want it so what you will do next is once you adjust all the photos you're using to where you want them uh, you'll go ahead and go to your library click down here so you have all your uh, photos up and you're gonna just go ahead and highlight one by one one by one here I think this should be all of them no, I'm deselecting them okay so here we go so 93 through 99 those are the photos I'm going to import so you're going to go ahead and right click on one of the photos you're going to go to edit in and then you're going to open as layers in Photoshop this is the most important thing so it's going to go ahead and bring in the photos and I'd already previ previously done this. So now it's going to take a second to import these photos again. And again, if you're in the LA area, um, if you follow uh, at caffeine and classics, uh, this is a newer show that's been coming around. Um, data filming filming this this is a uh, early uh, March of uh, 2021 and uh, there should be more of these shows I've been helping out with it a lot so uh, just kind of keep an eye out so okay so here's gonna be the key to it is I'm gonna be using the masking tool which is down here and what this does is you're gonna see here add a layer mask make sure you're on the proper layer I'm gonna click add layer mask and then you're gonna see this white box pop up so what this is is it pretty much puts like the color white all over this and once you using the brush tool which makes it a little bit easier um, and making sure your colors here are selected as black and white you're going to start painting over the 
over the uh, car. So let me see here. Another trick I do to kind of see what part of the photos I'm going to want to uh, blend into this top photo is I'll go ahead and shut off the layer so I could see the one underneath there. And as you see here, this top layer right here, it's this photo. Now the bottom photo, I'm gonna wanna get this section here, um, probably some of the lights here that are hitting the, oh no, I don't need that. So I'm gonna try to hit this area here with the brush and then get up here cause it's highlighted there. Okay, so here we go. So now I'm gonna start painting over this. And what I'm painting, as you can see here, is painting the color black over the, the truck. What this is doing is this is now exposing the photo underneath. This is why it's so important that you put the truck or whatever you're shooting, you know, like this way on a tripod so it's not moving. So all these photos are perfectly aligned. So now when I'm painting over this, I'm slowly just revealing the photo underneath, which in this case, it's the more lit areas of the truck. Okay, so you can see there. Okay, so and then also, um, now I'm gonna do this part here. I'm painting it black right now. Again, painting it black, but I have this layer mask on. If not, I'm just gonna, if I don't have the layer mask on, it's just gonna literally paint the color black all over it, which I don't want. Um, all right, so also gonna add in this part, painting black over this. So what happens if you accidentally paint over and you go, oops, I did not wanna do that. Um, and you know, you can't just hit undo. Uh, all you have to do is actually go and flip the colors here with this little button and start painting the color white. So it's putting back that, the, uh, that original photo kind of see there. So if you mess up, it's pretty simple. And the best part too is when you're just using the simple brush like this, you have all these options of it being kind of feathered or really like hard round edges. So your options to kind of blend this uh, to whatever you're liking is, uh, is a lot better. Okay, so I think that's it for this one. Um, I think I'm gonna also add in this part too. Let me switch it back to black so I can reveal what's underneath there. Just kind of take a little bit of that edge off of it. Nope, don't wanna do that. Okay. So again, I'm gonna be a little bit quicker with this just because I don't want you to watch a freaking 10 hour long video, but okay. So now we're kind of done with this layer. I kind of got whatever I needed from it. Now, if you do know a better way to do this part, this is just how I do it. I go ahead and get this layer and get this layer and then I merge them. Okay, so I can't go back and edit them anymore, but like I said, you might know a better way to do this. But how I do it is now my layers are done here. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go ahead and shut off this layer so I could see what next I wanna add on to it. Now it's the right side of the truck is lit up along with some of the floors you can see here. So now I'm gonna do the same thing. Click on this layer, click the layer mask, make sure I'm on black and I'm just gonna start painting the color black over and it's gonna start revealing the uh, paint color underneath or whatever's underneath it, depending whatever you're working on. Okay, so you can see it there, painting all this black and it's sh slowly revealing the photo underneath. Okay. This is why I like shutting off the, the mask here, the, the layer, so you can kind of see the photo underneath. So like up here, I see in the second photo that, ooh, there's a lot of light, so I want to add this 
section here. And remember, this uh, photography is art, so you get to do whatever you want with it. If you want to turn the, the truck purple or you know make half of it uh, dark, and it, <clears throat> it's whatever you want. So I think that's the most important part too, is doing what you feel looks good on, on your photos, because I think that's what also helps you stand out. If you're purposely trying to like copy somebody else, which again, there's nothing wrong with it, so you can kind of learn the techniques, but still give it your own style. So again, blending these two in. Uh, well, I have a Mac, but uh, Command, no, sorry, Shift X will flip flop the colors as you can see here. This is Shift and X. Um, and just start learning some of the shortcuts and makes your, your life so much easier, uh, especially when you're doing stuff like this. Okay, I think we're okay here for now. All right. So again, just for example, I'll leave it like this for now. So I'm gonna merge the layers again and move on to the next one. So as you can see, if you have, if you took about 50, 60 shots to put it together, you can get extremely detailed in this. Um, all right, so now we got the photo of me lighting up the interior. So I'm gonna go ahead and again, do my layer mask and shift X so I can get the, and see when you also put it together, you'll see like in this situation, this photo I took uh, with the flash in the truck, it doesn't also highlight this part here on the front of the dash. So if I still keep the original, part of the original photo, and kind of zoom in and kind of get a little bit more detailed. Like I said, you can sit here for hours getting all this done, you know, perfect. Now, sometimes too, you can have um, alignment issues uh, just because when you're standing in different places with the flash, it moves the truck over. Um, so I think too, just with blending it softly, it will go ahead and um, kind of help that out or using the cloning tool or, you know, or even just shifting the photo up and down just a little bit once you're happy where it's placed. Okay, so I'll go ahead and just finish off the rest of this and I'll be right back. All right. So as you saw in the quick time lapse, I kind of just put everything together um, again. Not spending too much time on it just to again show you the concept uh, you can sit here for hours you know trying to get every little perfect detail um, so it just depends I mean if you're doing this for a client you know you want to make sure it's uh, done to the best of your abilities um, but the the important part is to go out and try to sh shoot this because also too when you're when you're putting this together in Photoshop it also teaches you like oh I need to next time make sure I add another uh, highlight here or you know make sure to get the flash a little bit over there or or it was too intense so uh, like in these situations you know take uh, a few extra photos and then if you notice that you didn't need it afterwards like I did with some other photos you know just delete them but uh, at least for now you can see what the concept is with this you know uh, it's a little bit different than sometimes what you see out there this is kind of mimicking again if you had the ability to buy about this was what five six photos 
And so if you had the ability to buy about five, six of the big flashes that you saw me holding, placing them all around the room, and then in one shot, getting this photo. So of course, like any other photographer or, or a photographer that's starting up, I would love to have all that equipment, but it's just a reality you don't. And the other part too is it's a little bit harder, um, especially when you're doing something like this on location, you gotta be kind of quick. The thing I do like about the setup I have, minus the, the big uh, diffuser, is the, the photos I get, at least with the monolight uh, or the flash, and it does have a little uh, diffuser that I can uh, hold. And it does make it a lot easier to to hold that especially like on windy days and it is a little bit more car show friendly i mean if you do put your uh, tripod down uh, you do also need a remote trigger uh, i did go the cheap route and spent you know 11 bucks on amazon i tried the app that does come uh, again specifically for sony i don't know any of the other ones a nikon or canon uh it I did try to use the phone app and it, it does work. The problem is it takes a while for one photo to go in and it kind of does a quick download so you can see the photo on your phone and what you took, which again, is awesome. But when you're trying to snap this many photos at once and also if the flash doesn't trigger, then you gotta do it again. And this was kind of after the show was over with, we moved the truck into the building to take this photo on purpose and you know when you're trying to do a quick car show uh it's a it's a lot different so i went ahead and spent the money and bought uh this flash that'll i mean this trigger that i'll show you on the screen here it was worth the money <laughs> um i got these photos a lot quicker yeah it was kind of a lot to have to spend but i did go again the cheap route on amazon and the button worked like a handful of times and then it just didn't work and this was the last time I attended this event and was trying to quickly shoot some of the other vehicles just randomly parked there uh, that belong to other people. So, uh, you know, sometimes you, you get what you pay for. Uh, I didn't want to spend the money on it, but shooting that day with that trigger, whew, it made my life so much easier. So uh, sometimes spend the money if you know it's gonna work. Uh, Again, if you have any other questions with this, you know, this is a great practicing tool. This can work for anything. You can even just do this in your house, even get a um, decent sized little model car uh, with a regular, you know, a single flash that goes on top of your camera and just kind of practice putting these photos together on a larger scale. Um, don't also be, you know, uh, kind of turned off from trying this. If you don't have one of the big lights um, I've done this before and I'll go ahead and um, uh, link the photo up here, I mean the video up there uh, that I did a while back with the uh, project car that I have and uh, just using a very dark canyon, you know, in the in the middle of the night using a simple flash to uh, put the photo together the same way and that flash was like 20 bucks. It wasn't even attached to the camera. I was manually just triggering it um, or with the light light painting or with a simple like $20 LED light that you can buy again on Amazon. So uh, like I said, I'll link that video here in the description and up above um, for that video to explain all of that uh, fun stuff too. So I do hope this did help uh, kind of explain a couple things. And you know, if, um, if you have any other questions with it, uh, any of the equipment or any of the problems you have, uh, just drop me a line, uh, you know, you can comment down below or any of the other contact stuff that I'll leave here. And if you did attempt to do this and put it together yourself, uh, again, tag me in it. I'm really curious to see other people have done that before. And it's really nice to see, you know, uh, them putting their, their photos together, but also to, if you have a, you know, it's, if you don't have a classic, uh, rat rod slammed right hand drive, uh, you know, pickup truck, that's okay. Go, again, the photos in the other video was of a 2004 Focus. You just gotta have fun with it and you know, just make it your own. So again, AJ from Motor Car Now, hope to uh, see you on the next video. And again, drop me a line if you have any other questions and I hope you enjoyed the video. Good luck shooting out there, bye.